welcome back to the Art Life YouTube channel. I'm Mrs. B and here I'm going to teach you how to use pouring paint. Now I know a few people are possibly turned off using pouring paint because they might think it might be too hard or you might need some really technical kind of materials to have a go. But that's not true and I'm here to show you that today. This is a beginner's guide to using pouring paint and I simplify it as best as I can. In this video I show you where to pick up your own pre-mixed pouring paint as well as make your own at home. I also have a go at showing you three different techniques for using pouring paint and having a go at creating your own beautiful, random, beautifully swirled artworks. Paint pouring does take a bit of equipment um, that you'll need to set up just to make sure that you don't completely destroy and mess up the area that you're working in. So you will need a tray of some sort. This is to catch any of the paint that's falling off the sides of the canvas. You also need a drying rack. That's because you need an elevated sort of surface that the canvas can sit on while the paint is dripping off the sides of the canvas. You'll need some pouring paint. Now I just got this pre-mixed pouring paint from Kmart. It's definitely the easiest option and probably even the cheapest. However, you can make your own pouring paint using normal acrylic paint and adding a pouring medium. Another thing you'll need is a canvas to work on. And today I'm gonna to show you a technique using a cup. All right, so I tried to get some canvases at the shops and there weren't any there. So I'm actually doing something that is probably not recommended, but if you're seeing this video, it worked. So we'll have to wait and see. What I'm going to do is actually put some blue tack on the back of some thicker kind of watercolor paper. I'm gonna use that instead of a canvas today. You do need a solid base to support it because the paint will be pouring over the top. So I'm going to stick it to an old canvas and hope that this hack works. So I wanna show you a few techniques with pouring. And I have a few different types of pouring paint. I have a pouring mixture. I have some really watery, it's, it's really low quality paint. So it's actually very fluid and very liquidy. You can use something like this. Anything that's going to run on its own is fine. Better quality paint is thicker, so it will not spread. But something that's really watery because it's cheap, <laughs> will actually work. So I'm gonna try that as well. And I wanted to show you a very cost-effective way of creating pouring paint, and that is by squeezing some paint into a cup and literally just adding water. In doing so, the color will become lighter. Adding water will dilute it, and it means that it will become more transparent, which is why using a pouring medium will help to keep the vibrance of the color. But I wanted to show you what to do if you don't have those types of materials. So I'm going to do about half paint to half water. So you kind of want the consistency of milk. You can see it's quite runny there. That's ready to use. So I have three types of pouring paint I'm going to work with today. The first technique I'm going to show you is called a flip cup. And it's probably the most common of pouring paint styles. What you need is a disposable cup and you're just going to fill the cup with layers of pouring paint. So the idea is to build up a lot of layers of your pouring paint, one over the top of the other. There's no real method with the order of colors. Obviously, the more colors you use, the brighter your artwork will be, but I'm really just having a play. 
So depending on how big your canvas or your piece of paper is will depend on how much you need to fill up your cup. Um, I'm going to do a few more layers because I want to make sure that there's enough paint to fill the entire piece of paper and run over the sides. So you do go through quite a lot of paint with this exercise. Okay, so my cup is about half full here and my piece of paper is about the size of an A4. So we'll see if that works. Now, I've got a whole big cup full of paint. This is the messy part. So get your tray ready. Okay, my drying rack's gonna sit over the top of my tray there and I'm going to put my canvas on top of my cup and hold it like that. All right, are you ready? We're going to let it go and see what happens. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh. All right. The color has pulled out here and now it's my job to move it around the entire space. So I don't want it to just sit there. I need to tilt my paint carefully, gently. You see the colors will move around going right to the edge there. See it's starting to drip into my tray there. I want it to take up my whole piece of paper. You can sort of guide the paint if it's not really moving for you. You can sort of guide it very lightly. You don't want the colors to mix too much. Try not to overwork it. The more you move it around, the more the colors will move around, which is sometimes a good thing, but sometimes a bad thing because the colors will start to mix together. And we want to try to keep them separate. So I'm going to let that dry for a very long time, probably a few days. And it's still dropping off the side, so make sure you use the tray. The next pour paint technique I'm going to show you is using a sink strainer. It creates a different effect because it has these holes that go through it. So we're going to use that. It's a similar technique in that you fill a cup. I'm going to fill it about half full, full of my pour paint, my cheap white paint and my watered down paint mixtures. Whoops, that's okay. <laughs> Except this time, I'm gonna put my sink strainer down first and pour my pour paint through my sink strainer and then lift, ready? see the paint comes through in this liney kind of pattern and so now I can move that around and the effect is awesome. there. Now I probably didn't use enough paint on this occasion to fill the entire space but that's okay I can just cut into it once it's dried.
All right. I'm ready to show you the third and final technique for our pour paint today. I'm going to fill a cup as I have with some more pour paint. This technique is called a dirty pour and it requires you to fill a cup full of pour paint but before you tip it onto the canvas or paper you need to give yourself a layer of paint. This layer will help to keep the paint moving because there'll be a surface To which the paint can help move around. So I've just got a light colour here and I'm spreading it across my whole paper. I need to work quickly because I don't want this to dry. It does not need to be overly neat but we do want to fill as much of the paper or canvas as you possibly can. And I'm just spreading it out with a paintbrush but if you have a spatula or something like that you can definitely do that. All right, I have a thin layer of paint there, see? And I am literally now just going to pour my cup full of paint onto my paper. This is the messiest version of pour paint. That's why it's called a dirty pour. So please prepare your area well and be prepared to clean up a little bit. Let's do it. You can pour in any sort of motion. You can go back and forth, you can do a spiral. Oh, so awesome. Okay. Now, just let the paint work. We're gonna help it around. Fill in some spots if you need to. Now I learnt from my mistake last time and I used enough paint to fill my paper this time. Leave it to drip and drop until it dries. So it's as simple as that. I really hope you've enjoyed learning all about how to use pouring paint today and have a go at using one, two or three of the techniques that I showed you today. Now please make sure you subscribe below because I will be posting two videos per week for you to view and have a go at some art at home. Thanks for joining me.